Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to my chemistry lessons. Today I'm going to introduce the topic electrochemistry to you. Electro means electricity and chemistry means chemical reactions. So any chemical reaction that leads to generation of electricity or electricity that is used to cause chemical reactions would be studied under the topic electrochemistry. Before we come to the details, let me just recapitulate a little bit that we've studied in class 11 and class 10. If you remember, we studied displacement reactions. Displacement reactions are where two ions compete with each other and the one that is more reactive tends to take the place of a lesser reactive um, ion from its salt or it pushes it out and takes its place in the salt. Such reactions are known as displacement reactions and if you remember these are also redox reactions that is reduction and oxidation occur during such a displacement. So let us study one such reaction. If you take a solution of copper nitrate and you dip a zinc rod into it, what do you notice? Zinc is more reactive than copper or it has a stronger tendency to get oxidized or which means that it has a stronger tendency to lose electrons in comparison to copper. So in copper nitrate, copper is already present in its oxidized form, that is in the form of Cu2 positive ions. But zinc has a stronger tendency to lose these electrons. So zinc forces its electrons onto copper and it itself acquires the Zn2 positive state and pushes copper out of the solution or out of the salt. So copper starts getting deposited while zinc, the zinc rod, it gets dissolved little by little as it displaces the copper from the copper nitrate solution. And zinc, which was neutral, solid, it reacted with copper nitrate, the copper ions were displaced. So what actually happened was that two electrons from zinc went to copper and copper, which already had lost two electrons and was an ion, it became neutral and it became a solid uh, copper and zinc that was the solid and the neutral atom it lost two electrons and formed the zinc ion and took the place of copper in the salt copper nitrate and now the salt solution is of zinc nitrate now notice what happens in this reaction the copper nitrate solution was blue in color and if you really see what you observe the blue color of copper nitrate as zinc enters into zinc ions and copper starts getting deposited. The blue color solution, it turns colorless because zinc nitrate is a colorless solution. Now, if we add H2S gas to this and we make the solution alkaline by adding ammonia to it, which will turn into ammonium hydroxide, you know. So it, in an alkaline medium, when we pass H2S gas through this solution, a white precipitate of zinc sulfide appears, which proves that zinc was present as zinc ions in the solution. And which means that no more of the copper is present in the solution. The copper ions are no longer there. Now, if we try to do the opposite, now if we put a copper strip in zinc nitrate, now that you have the reaction has occurred, the copper has deposited on the, um, on the metal um, zinc metal rod, and you remove the zinc metal rod because now you are left with zinc nitrate solution. And you checked also that it would turn, uh, if you pass H2S through it in an alkaline medium, it would give a white color of precipitate of zinc sulfide. Let us take this pure solution now, not with the zinc sulfide, but pure zinc nitrate solution. And this time, let us dip a copper rod into it. And if that happened with a zinc rod, why doesn't this happen with a copper rod? The same reaction should take place with a copper rod. Copper should now displace zinc. But this does not happen. Why? Because copper is less reactive or has a lesser tendency to get oxidized than zinc. Therefore, copper being a weaker, um, what should I say, reducing agent, does not displace zinc. So we try the same thing now. We turn it alkaline, the solution, after a while, and we pass H2S through it we know that the color of copper sulfide is black and we should just as we got the white zinc sulfide we should get the black copper sulfide but that does not happen which shows that such a reaction did not occur which 
gives us an indication why such displacement reactions occur and how they are redox reactions. Now the question is, why are these redox reactions of interest to us and why am I talking about this in electrochemistry? Because what is happening here, if you carefully notice, is a transfer of electrons. A transfer of electrons is taking place from a stronger metal or a stronger reducing agent to a weaker reducing agent, something that gets oxidized more easily. As a result of which, this transfer of electrons, if it is, if you really look at what moving electrons is or moving charges are, moving charge is nothing but electricity. So what is happening is that there is electricity being generated in this chemical reaction. Using this is electrochemistry. And how do we use this? This knowledge that since there are electrons that are moving, since there are ions which are charged which are moving, it means charges are moving and that is electricity. So how do we tap this? How do we use this electricity? So what is done? You have, you must have studied about redox couples in class uh, 11. A redox couple is a half reaction. A half reaction which means the oxidized and the reduced form of the same metal. So if you have zinc, Zn2 positive and neutral zinc. So oxidized and reduced forms of the two metals that is zinc and copper. So we have both the redox couples and these redox couples what we did was that we had put the zinc rod into the copper sulfate solution. If we separate these two and carry out the reaction in such a way that the electrons do not get transferred directly into solution but through an external wire, we will be able to get electricity in the external wire. So that is what we try to do. So what do we do? Displace it. Sorry, there is one point that I forgot mentioning, the metal activity series. All metals have a tendency to get oxidized. Some are stronger and some are, and the one that has a stronger tendency to get oxidized is a stronger reducing agent too. So based on their reactivity, they are written down in a series or in a hierarchical, hierarchical, hierarchical order of their reactivity, which is known as the metal activity series. And any metal which is higher up in the activity series has a tendency to displace one which is lower in the activity series, which means its activity is lesser than this one. Therefore, this can displace the lower metal, but a lower metal cannot displace a higher metal in the activity series. Coming back to our point of the redox couples. You have two redox couples. You join the two redox couples in separate beakers and that results in the making of a Daniel cell. And that results in the generation of electricity that can be used. How do you do it? You connect them with the help of a salt bridge. What is a salt bridge? A salt bridge uh, is a glass tube, which is a U-tube, which has been filled with KCl or ammonium nitrate solution and which has been heated up with agar agar and agar agar when it is heated up in uh, with water it results in the formation of a jelly like substance why is this done because the jelly is kind of a semi solid which does not move anymore but it allows the movement of ions through it so it is a kind of a bridge which is going to connect the two uh, the two beakers so we keep the two redox couples in two separate beakers. That is what we do. We have done here in the Daniel cell. In one beaker, we take a zinc rod dipped in zinc sulfate solution. And in the other beaker, we take a copper rod dipped in copper sulfate solution. And this is the U-tube, which has got KCl or ammonium nitrate in agar agar jelly, which acts as the salt bridge. It is known as the salt bridge. One, it is a bridge. It is bridging the two solutions and it is connecting the two solutions and it is a salt bridge because it has salts like KCl and ammonium nitrate in it and it helps in the movement of ions. This is done in order to complete the circuit. You have studied in physics that no electrical appliance will work unless there is a complete circuit, unless the circle is completed. If electrons move from one point at the other point, they have to come back. The cycle has to be completed, only then electricity actually travels.
So we have this salt bridge acts as that connector to bring back the electrons. Now on the zinc and zinc sulfate that is the uh, electrode we call these electrodes. The electrode at which oxidation occurs is known as the anode and in an electrochemical cell this is known as an electrochemical cell or the renal cell. Uh, one example of an electrochemical cell is the renal cell. You have the zinc rod which acts as the anode and zinc in zinc sulfate solution and the cathode or the positive electrode is the cathode which is at which reduction occurs and you have a copper rod dipped in copper sulfate solution connected by the salt bridge which has KCl or ammonium nitrate in agar agar gel. Now at the anode oxidation occurs that is zinc gets oxidized to Zn2 positive and it releases two electrons. These two electrons travel via the external circuit. Do you see here? Electrons moving in this direction. So, and there's a key. The key and an ammeter to check the current. The key, as soon as you lock the key, like you put it uh, into it, the circuit gets connected. And the moment the circuit gets connected, this oxi the oxidized electrons start moving through the uh, outer wire. And that can be read on an ammeter that there is current because electrons are moving. And as electrons move here, they come to cathode, they are supplied into this beaker through the cathode. And the, the copper ions which are present in the solution here, they gain those electrons and they get deposited in the form of copper. And the ions which are present, they start traveling through the, uh, through the salt bridge. And therefore, the, the difference in the charges that is created as a result of which, that is balanced by completing the circuit by movement through the salt bridge. We'll be doing this detailed study of how this works and how it functions when I actually do the Daniel cell with you. But right now my aim is to tell you that how electricity is generated in electrochemistry that we carry out the half reactions in two different beakers or two different containers and connect them through a wire in order to get electric current in the wire and then use that electric current. How is that useful? It generates electricity. We use chemical reactions to generate electricity. So that is why electrochemistry is a very important topic or field of study. So if this is one aspect that you can uh, create electricity using chemical reactions, the opposite is also possible that if you can create electricity using chemical reactions, you can actually cause chemical reactions which are non-spontaneous. Now this reaction is spontaneous, this happens on its own. Zinc is more reactive, it is stronger, it can displace copper. But it is possible to displace a weaker metal by force. If you force it, and how do you force it? By using electric current. So the opposite of what happens in the reaction that takes place in an, in an electrochemical cell. The opposite can, be, uh, can take place if you pass the electrode potential which is higher than the one that is created here. One, you pass electro electricity which is higher, which has potential higher than what is created here. Second, you pass that electric current in the opposite direction and force the opposite reaction. That process is known as electrolysis. And that is also done. So the opposite also can be carried out and that is also an, an important branch of chemistry which has its own use. So in an, electrolytical, uh, in an electrolytic cell or the process is known as electrolysis, we lysis means breaking down, electro means electricity. So using electricity to break down a compound. So we force electricity to, uh, to break down a compound. For example, if you take a, two copper rods, one acting as anode, one act as, acting as cathode. Why? Because you connected one to the positive terminal of the battery and one to the negative terminal of the battery. And since electrolysis is the opposite of generating electricity in an electrochemical cell, the positive electrode in electrolytic cell is negative, uh, sorry, the, the cathode is negative and the anode is positive. Again, we'll be studying in details about electro, uh, electrolysis as we do the chapter, but right now what I want to convey is that you can carry out the opposite process where you use electric current and force a reaction. 
So we took two copper rods dipped in copper sulfate solution. The, at the cathode, the reaction that took place was copper. It gained two electrons just as at cathode, it is always a reduction that occurs. So it gains two electrons, gets reduced to solid copper. And this copper gets deposited on the copper rod. And at the same time, a deficit is created in the solution. What will happen where if the copper that is the copper ions that have been lost now will be supplied by the other electrode that is the anode. So anode rod had neutral copper. This neutral copper loses two electrons and it produces the copper ions into the solution. So it furnishes. So what happens? The copper anode, it gets smaller and smaller and the copper cathode gets thicker and thicker. And in this process, what is happening? Only copper ions are moving and depositing a solid copper metal. So it is a method that is used to purify many metals and many chemicals. It is a purification method. So you have both the opposite processes which are very useful in electrochemistry. Now, what is electrochemistry used for? A large number of metals, sodium hydroxide, chlorine, fluorine, a lot of chemicals are produced as a result of our knowledge of electrochemistry. Then it is used as a source of electricity. How? You use chemical energy and turn it into electrical energy. So you get batteries and fuel cells that we use, they are all based on electrochemistry. And why is electrochemistry so desirable? Because one, it is energy efficient. Two, it is environment friendly. Since it is environment or eco-friendly, electrochemistry is desired. You are not burning any fuel, you're not causing pollution in the air. This is a technique that can be carried out in closed chambers and yet you get electric current out of it or you get pure material out of it. So this was the introduction of electrochemistry. So in the following classes, we'll be studying the chapter in details. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.